Hi guys, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. I managed to read nine books in August, three of which were graphic novels and I am going to put all the trigger warnings for the books down in the description box because I think quite a lot of these books have trigger warnings so it'll just be easier for me to compile them all down there. If you haven't kept up with my weekly vlogs and you want to know which specific vlog a book features in then just comment down below and I can guide you to the right one but without further ado let's get into the wrap up. So the first books that I read I don't have with me because I actually borrowed them from the library on a whim and they were volumes two and three of Deadly Glass. I read the first volume ages ago and it kind of just follows a school of assassins. I picked these two up just because I wanted a graphic novel and these were the only ones available at the library that I could start. They did have a lot of other ones but they didn't necessarily have the first volume or something like that so I ended up picking up these ones and I also borrowed the fourth one but I returned that without reading it because I am actually DNF in the series. I just don't get along with the series. The whole idea of a school of assassins is completely fine. I don't mind violence and goriness and things like that so that should have been completely fine but there's just this weird kind of vulgar humour to it which I do not get along with. I don't like reading that kind of thing. There's a scene including toilets and it's just disgusting. It's just not my kind of thing and also I just don't like the main character especially from the second volume onwards. He kind of does really crappy things to other characters and then he's just like oh no I'm becoming one of those guys I don't like as if that excuses everything and I just no this series is not for me so I rated both of these two stars I'm done with it. <laughs> but it turns out I actually had quite a lot of two star reads in August which isn't great but there is a book that makes up for all of it. But the next book was one of the two star reads unfortunately and that was The Hand the Eye in the Heart by Zoe Marriott. So this was the August myth take book of the month with the theme of Chinese legends or folklore because this is a retelling of Mulan and it does follow the typical sense of a Mulan retelling in that it follows someone who takes the place of their father and goes to war. Again this book was just not for me. I don't really like reading fight scenes and lengthy training scenes and things like that so I probably should have guessed really that I wouldn't get along with this book too much because you know Mulan follows someone going to war. So for the most part I just didn't really have that much interest but then again I can't really pinpoint why because there are books that are my absolute favourites that do include lots of fight scenes and war and things like that like Game of Thrones for instance and yet I do enjoy those so I don't know where the kind of line is for me but this book just didn't capture my interest. I wasn't invested in any of the characters. Oh, I will just mention as well that this does have a Chinese inspired setting and the main character is non-binary. However, the author is not either of those things and there is a controversy surrounding this author, so you might want to look into that some more before you read it yourself. But as far as the story goes, I just didn't find myself interested. I wasn't invested in the characters. I was bored by the fighting and the training. There was also just this one rivalry for half of the book that just seemed lazy. There wasn't any real reason for the rivalry it was just this person dislikes the main character just because and I just got bored of it it seemed really petty and nah. I wouldn't say it's all bad but it's just definitely not for me it didn't hold my interest at all and I do think that was the general mood of everybody who read this for myth take in August so yeah I ended up rating this two stars <laughs> The next book luckily went a lot better and that was A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. So this book is a retelling of the Trojan War from the women's perspective. It follows quite a few different perspectives and I did particularly love that because not only do we see women from both the Greek and the Trojan point of views, but we also see divinities, the muses, and it's just really interesting. I said this about Natalie Haynes's The Children of Jocaster as well, but Natalie Haynes is just really good at making mythological characters feel human, even when they are divine and not human. She manages to make them feel authentic and just completely believable. My favourite perspectives in particular were Calliope, who is one of the muses, and also Penelope, who is known as Odysseus's wife. They both just had such bitterness in their voice and I don't know, I keep calling this book a book of angry women and I just think that Natalie Haynes does a really good job at giving the women a voice where they didn't have it before. You do see them reacting to all the things that are happening to them and their anger is completely justified. I just really liked seeing that. It was quite entertaining in a way to read about their anger as well because we do see their male perspective so often that like they just need anger thrown in there because 
the stuff that these women go through is awful. But yes, really enjoyed this one, ended up rating it 4.5 out of 5 stars. So the next book I read was The Sisters of the Winterwood by Rena Rossner. This follows two sisters who lived quite a comfortable life on the edge of a woodland until their parents suddenly leave home and then a band of mysterious men just come and enter their village. One of the sisters is put under a spell and they find out that their family is holding the secret magical heritage that they didn't know about. This book is inspired by Slavic folklore and Jewish mythology and I was really ridiculously excited for this book. I just thought it sounded incredible. I was super intrigued because this is written from two perspectives and one of the perspectives looks like it's written in poetry. So I was just so excited to get to this one. And it was a massive disappointment. I did not like this book. It's just completely different to what I was expecting. The synopsis only really tells you about the family side of things and, you know, the magic and things. So I was very much looking forward to that story. But this is dominantly a romance and you can't escape that at any point because both of the perspectives do turn into a romance. One of them kind of goes overboard with that because all she talks about is how much she wants to kiss someone. And I was like, I don't want to read this. There's no explanation given as to why one of the perspectives is written in a kind of poetic form. I thought that with this being based off fairy tale and folklore that the spell that one of the sisters is put under would be to only be able to speak in song or poetry because that's quite a common trope in fairy tales and folklore and I thought that that would be really interesting but there's just no reason given. It just is and I don't know why. I mean it did make it a quicker read so at least there's that but I just was expecting some kind of reason and didn't get one. But my main problem with this book ended up being how repetitive it was. I feel like there's three main currents running through this book, that being the sisterhood aspect, the romance and the secret that both of the sisters have. But those three things are very much reinforced just through repetition. It's literally just the two sisters repeating the same kind of sentence over and over again. So for instance, the sisterhood thing. The only way you can really tell that the sisters care for each other is that when one of them goes missing, the other one just keeps repeating, where is my sister? I have to find my sister, I need to know where she is, I need to know she's not in danger and it's just that every single chapter. It just became really really boring to read and the only time that anything really changed was in the last 60 pages. So this is like a 400 and something page book and I just felt like I was reading the same thing for at least 300 pages. And then in the last 60 pages where things actually happened it was just wrapped up really quickly with like no further exploration and then in the final scenes there were lots of like big formal speeches that just seemed really out of place and I just... I don't know. I was massively disappointed by this book. I was hoping it was going to become like almost a new favourite but it just did the exact opposite. I didn't end up liking it. Again, I rated it 2 out of 5 stars. <laughs> After that I picked up another graphic novel which was Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. I borrowed this off my friend Charlotte and this is basically just a graphic novel of short stories which are kind of horror, gothic kind of stories. Basically this would be the perfect graphic novel for Halloween. I ended up rating this three stars because there was a big noticeable difference between the stories that I liked and the stories that I really really loved. So there were two stories that I really loved and with those ones I was completely gripped, I didn't want them to end and the rest of them I was just kind of like, okay. That was nice. <laughs> I do think though that this captures the gothic horror genre really well, especially with the art style and the colour scheme as well, like does this not just scream Halloween? <laughs> so if you're looking for ghost stories, monster stories, something that's quick and dark around Halloween or in autumn maybe, then this one would be perfect. Like I said, I rated it 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Wicked Fox by Catcher. This one is inspired by Korean mythology and it follows an 18 year old girl who is also a gummy hoe. A gummy hoe being a nine tailed fox who feeds off the souls of men. However she loses her fox bead which is the thing she needs to be able to do this and so she has to get that back before she starves. I really really enjoyed this one. I know there's a whole lot of mixed reviews for this but I just found it really entertaining. I thought it was quite an addictive and quick paced book to read. And I did just find myself completely invested. The audiobook for this is particularly good for that as well. And what surprised me most was that I didn't hate the romance. It usually takes quite a lot for me to get on board with a romance in a book, but I just... I don't know. I've seen a lot of people saying that it's quite insta-lovey and I can see that perspective because this book does only take place over a couple of months maybe. So it is quite a short time period but I think because you do see the two characters becoming friends beforehand and you see them bickering, you see them go through troubles, they're not just thrown together and go from 0 to 100 in 0.2 seconds and I think that really helped me get on board with it. I did find that the plot twists were either predictable or just unnecessary, especially the last one. I feel like the last plot twist is just kind of thrown in because the author realised she didn't quite have enough 
happening for the last 100 pages and so this plot twist was just thrown in really randomly. The preceding events were then really dramatic but wrapped up really quickly and then we just moved past it as if it was nothing and it just, it was kind of unnecessary. I personally didn't like that but, you know. Mm. <laughs> but for the most part I did really enjoy this story, even just from a general culture point of view because it is based in Korea. I really enjoyed reading about that culture because it's so different from my own. And I also just really enjoyed how the Korean mythology was woven into the story as well, so yeah. I ended up rating this one 4 out of 5 stars. I then picked up another Mulan retelling which was Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. This one follows a girl who wants to become a professional tailor but she can't because she is female and they don't allow that. But one day her father who is also a tailor is summoned to become one of the imperial tailors but he can't actually do tailoring anymore and so she decides to dress up as her brother and take his place. However to become the imperial tailor there's this whole competitive trial situation going on and all of the trials are seemingly impossible. As you can imagine there are lots of rivalries sabotaging and things like that and I really really enjoyed the competitive trial aspect of this. However this story does take quite a big detour halfway through and I found myself losing interest the further into that we went. It kind of goes on this long-winded desert journey and I always feel like deserts are just not a good setting to read about in a book. They're obviously barren, there's nothing happening, there's nothing there, so like any scene set in a desert feels like it takes forever to get through because there's just nothing happening, which means that the author did write the desert well because that's exactly what a desert is, but like I don't want to read about it. <laughs> From that point on as well the romance just goes all out and I could have gotten on board with it if it just went a slightly slower because I did like the sarcastic banter that the characters had together but within one chapter it turned into all of our days and nights were dedicated to kissing. That is pretty much a direct quote and I was just sat here like no they weren't. <laughs> God, I sound so cynical in this video because I'm just slating all of the romances in every book, apparently. But no, I just found myself losing interest the further into this book we went, and I do think it's because we did stray away from the competition and the tailoring side of things. Of course, she's still tailoring throughout the book, but it's just not as heavy on the details, which I did really like reading about because it was something completely different to what I'd read before. And so I just found myself losing interest, which was such a shame because I thought that this was going to be a really solid read for me, but I did still rate it 3 out of 5 stars. So then we get to the final book of August and we're ending on a high note because I read Nevernight by Jay Kristoff and I absolutely loved it. This is a new favourite book. So this follows a girl called Mia who is actually going to train to become an assassin in order to get revenge on the people who killed her parents. She also has this strange ability with shadows and so there is a magical element to this and it's just, oh, it's so good guys. It definitely doesn't shy away from the presumed realities of assassination because it's definitely very violent, very gory, it doesn't skip on the details and it's definitely an adult book, I will say that right now. But I just got completely invested in this story, I really love the world building, it's so detailed and there are actually footnotes in quite a lot of the pages of this book giving you more information about the paragraph that's just been written or something. But there would be more information about say the religion or a backstory to one of the people mentioned and I've seen that quite a lot of people don't like the footnotes because it takes them away from the story and I can see that point of view but I personally didn't have a problem with them at all because I think my reading pace just kind of continues no matter where I'm looking so I just to me it just wasn't really any different to if that information was included in the initial paragraph if that makes any sense but yeah I just I was kind of mind blown by the world building because there's this whole religion and backstories and there's so much detail in it I will admit that it did take a little while for me to wrap my head around some of the things but if you just keep reading all of the important bits just slot into place eventually and you're fine but Jay Kristoff's writing just takes on this kind of sarcastic tone and blunt humour that I just absolutely loved. It meant that the character dialogue was really witty and I found that the character dynamics and the relationships were really believable because of that because it wasn't necessarily like, I don't know, it just sounded like genuine human conversation rather than like something that's been set up and structured a certain way. So I really enjoyed it. All of the characters were very much their own character. I didn't confuse any of them at all and I just love Mia, which definitely isn't going to end well as far as my emotions go, but I'm just... I'm too involved in this book now. I genuinely can't stop thinking about this book and everything that happened with it. I'm too far gone. I'm too invested now, so yeah. I ended up rating this one 5 out of 5 stars, which is particularly surprising because I don't rate books 5 stars 
all that often. My last five star read was in January, so this means a lot, guys. <laughs> Before I end this video, I also just want to quickly mention that going into September, I am currently reading both Vengeful by V.E. Schwab and rereading The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. So I have started these in August, but they will definitely be finished in September, so you'll see these in my September wrap up. But those were all the books that I read in August. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts on them were if you have. Let me know what your favourite book of August was as well because I'm always interested to hear about that. Please remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you've not subscribed already then please consider doing that. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!